how to say in French sorry but I don't understand French yet. In French, sorry but I don't understand French yet is. Désolé, mais je ne comprends pas encore le français. Hello my fellows who are planning to move to Canada. I've brought with me a list of 10 things that I wish I knew before I moved to Canada. So first things first. Hey Siri, how to say in French sorry but I don't understand French yet. In French, sorry but I don't understand French yet is. Désolé, mais je ne comprends pas encore le français. So it's désolé mais je ne comprends pas encore le français. So that's the first thing. You need to understand a little bit of French before you move to at least Quebec. The rest of the Canada, you're still fine. But if you're moving to Quebec, for example, you're moving to Montreal, you need to know a little bit of basic French. I'm taking a French course and it's been about a year and a half. Right now, I'm able to order in restaurants. Sometimes I get it right. Most of the time I get it wrong, but I'm trying. Uh, I'm also able to sort of talk to people in the shops like when I'm buying some clothes or something most of the time or at least in Montreal all the time they do speak English as well so when they see that I'm struggling with French they switch to English but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of French if you're moving to a city other than a big metropolitan city you definitely need to learn a lot of French the second thing is you still need to get a health insurance coverage, which is mandatory in Canada. Health as well as dental insurance. Your health insurance doesn't cover your dental. And even though you are covered by your health and dental insurance, you still have to pay a lot of money depending on what kind of insurance you have, but you still have to pay when you actually go to a hospital or you get a dental treatment or you get some medications. Your insurance covers from 50 to 70% of your treatments, but you still have to pay the rest of it. So health insurance is going to be, health and dental insurance is going to be one of your biggest expenses here in Canada. The third thing I want to share with you on my list is you still have to file taxes. Even if you don't have any source of income in Canada, if, even if all of your sources of income are your parents, your family, your uh, other assets in other countries, you have to still file your taxes in Canada and you have to list all of your sources of income that you have in other countries. If you have a savings account somewhere else or if you have any other asset that generates any interest on it, you have to list all of your income sources outside Canada here in Canada. So even if you don't have any source of income, even if you're a student here on a scholarship, you, you don't pay taxes on your scholarship if you're a student, but you still have to file your taxes. So keep that in mind. The next thing I have on my list is the big insurance that you need to get for your apartment and the personal liability coverage which is also mandatory here. Whenever you're trying to get an apartment here, whenever you're renting a house or an apartment or anything, you need to get an insurance for it, which is mandatory. Your landlord will ask you to get that insurance. So this will cover your property as well as it will include some personal liability coverage. So you need to get this. This is also going to be a rec recurring monthly expense that you have to pay. So take that into account. After that, keep in mind the phone plans are going to be this strange, weird, long-term commitment. For example, if you're coming here, you need to get a Canadian number. And if you also decide to get a phone with it at that time, it's going to be a two years commitment with... You, you will pay some amount upfront depending on the type of phone you're getting. You might be able to get a phone with zero upfront, but there is going to be a monthly charge for your phone as well as your SIM uh, data plan. Uh, all the calls here are free, calls as well as SMS, and most data plans will cost somewhere between $50 to $150 per month, and it will include somewhere between 2 GB to 10 GB data. So choose a plan wisely. If you can live with a 2 GB plan, don't go for a 10 GB plan. If you're a student like me, you need to save money. 
So phone plans are a long term commitment. You can't just charge your phone as spe- for a specific amount of money, use that to call or send SMS and then still keep using your phone without having money in it for the receiving. You need to pay a regular monthly fixed amount for your phone plans. That's the way it works here in, apparently. So keep that in mind. Let's see what else do I have on my list. Oh, getting a driving license is not a piece of cake. If you can, I would say better get a driving license in your country before coming here because if you want to get a driving license here, that is going to be a long road. There is a pretty decent amount of study hours after which you have some practice hours, you also have one year of mandatory driving. So in that one year you cannot drive alone, you need to have someone who has a driving license supervising you for the entire year you're exempt from that if you already have a driving license with you when you come here then you can just get a driving license without much trouble but do consider getting a driving license from your own country wherever you're coming from because i'm pretty sure getting a driving license here is going to be more difficult than any other country wherever you're coming from oh speaking of driving when you're crossing a road if you're coming from uk or pakistan or the other side of the world uh, you have to look the other side you have to look at the left side before crossing the road because here it's right hand side driving which is opposite from what it is in pakistan so you have to look on the other side of the road before crossing just to be safe look both sides So that's 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 what I'm doing. It's the safest option. Look both ways before you're crossing. Oh, the date format. This is going to be a funny one. So, remember most countries use the date format as day, month and year? Well, that's not the case here in Canada. Here we use year, month and date, which is fine and totally understandable. I I understand that. It's okay until it's not when you omit the year. when it's just the day and month it gets very confusing for example 812 versus 128 is a very different story and sometimes they ask you security questions like what was the date when you purchased that thing and you're looking in your receipts and you read it and you don't know what exactly they mean and especially if it's been a while since you made that purchase so do keep in mind the date format is going to be a little bit tricky especially when you don't write the year and you're only writing the day and the month it's going to be month and then the day here versus the standard day and the month so prepare to be amused as well as confused you better change your financials and addresses to canada this will save you a lot of effort when you're filing your taxes so if you have any accounts in other countries specifically the savings accounts or that you can close close them before you come here so that filing taxes becomes easier for you because otherwise you have to list a lot of income sources and it's going to become much more difficult for you obtaining some financial documents from your bank in the other country ask them to send it to you and then understand the format understand where you're supposed to enter that source of income it's going to get more complicated so it's better to change all your financials as well as all your permanent addresses to Canada if you're planning to come here for a long period of time for example if you're a PhD student and you're coming here for 4 to 5 years or more it's better for you to close all of your income sources in other countries and start new here it's it's going to be much simpler and easier and if you're a student most likely you don't even have a lot of income sources so it's it's going to be simpler if you have your permanent address here in Canada rather than having it in another country because you're living here for 5 years so all your mail is going to be here which is by the way another thing uh, i didn't realize how much snail mail is still used in Canada every time i open my mailbox which was a concept i was unfamiliar with before coming here i still find a lot of mail there which includes a lot of advertisements a lot of mail from my school uh, some insurance related documents bank documents there's a lot of stuff going on here which still works over snail mail uh, than the 
simple email or digital format. So I, th I think there's still a lot of catching up to do maybe. Uh, anyways, don't forget to check your mailboxes when you're here because they're, they're still in use. They're still used here. The last thing you, whether you're coming with a long credit history or zero credit history, it's not gonna matter at all because when you're here, you have to build your credit score from zero up again because your credit score in other countries does not count here. So when you come here, you cannot get a regular standard credit card right away. You're, you have to get some sort of a student credit card or some sort of credit builder card, which is gonna help you build some credit history. And then later you can get some decent credit card or you can get the credit limit extended on your card. So when you come here, do keep in mind, even if you have a long, good credit score and credit history in other countries, it's not gonna matter here. And you're gonna have to rely in the beginning entirely on your debit card. And once your credit card is approved, you can start using it, but you're gonna have very small credit limit. For the first year, most likely you're gonna have only a $1,000 credit limit on your card. So keep that in mind. This is my list of 10 things that I wish I knew before moving to Canada. If I missed something, please let me know in the comments. And if there is something that helped you, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Definitely don't forget to share with others who are in the same boat and planning to move to Canada. Stay awesome. Don't forget to share with others, whatever you like.